twist. Come on, twist. You've been doing so good since you got on the show. But on this episode, I gotta let you know this just wasn't it. What's up, y'all? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to get into growing up hip hop, you guys. We're going to talk about growing up hip hop, and then we're going to get into the episode of Ready to Love once I get a chance to watch it. But we got to talk about how, come on, twist, twist. Now, bro, you know you my nigga, right? Like, this whole time since you got on this show, everything's been copacetic and real good. You ain't caused no problems with nobody except with Sam, but his ass deserved it. And so here we get to this engagement, not engagement party, anniversary party, and you just was on one. I don't know if your dreads was too tight. I don't know if the weed was hitting that day. But it just, I gotta be, I gotta tell you when you're wrong, Twist. And this just wasn't one of those moments. But we'll get into it when we get to that part of the episode. But if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you for tuning in. Everybody, my Juice Box crew, y'all know what you gotta do. Hit that like button. Let me know that you gotta stop by and drop down in the comments and tell me what you thought about the episode. So let's go ahead and get into everything. We open up the episode, matter of fact, with uh, JoJo and Angela coming to, you know, the event space. And when he pulled up, he's like, oh, shoot, I thought this is where he was parking. I was nervous, y'all. I wasn't gonna lie. When I saw that parking lot, I was like... Like, you know, I really want to like it. I was like, ah, this wasn't what I was expecting. You know, when she talked about, you know, event planning for Cardi B and all that, I'm like, this ain't it. But she took Angela inside as JoJo was on the phone with Denise and they just started talking about life and how, you know, she's back uh, from Miami and how everything went with Daniel and you know Creed's like how is everything with him you know are you in love and she was like yeah she was like yeah I get it you know I kind of have something going on she's like it's just like an entanglement she's like no more like a situationship and she's like I just can't allow myself to you know let go she's like I built all these walls up which is understandable one she is you know Mr. Luke Nasty's daughter and then two like she's just a you know a, you can tell she's a very, like, strong, you know, woman who just, it's like, sometimes you just can't trust people. You don't know how to trust people with your heart, your emotion, your feelings, and whatnot. So, and just like, shoot, I have no problem with it. She's like, I just, you know, I'll go for it until you give me a reason not to. And so, she's like, well, who said I love you first? She gonna talk about, oh, I don't know. But you know who said I love you first. You know it was you. You know it was you. It was probably after a whole moment of Netflix and chill. Quit playing. The fact that Angela is in it like this deep can only mean one thing. <laughs> that nigga went in her deep and now she in love. She only got deep, deep love, okay? Um, yeah, so she's in Miami about him, you know, following him around. And Vanessa's going to question her about it later on in the episode. But you can tell Angela's like, ooh, enough of these questions. Enough of these questions, Cree. I don't know you like that. It's time for me to go. And her and JoJo ended up leaving. So after that, we see a scene with uh, Savannah. Savannah and Twist, matter of fact. Savannah has this apartment. And when uh, her brother says $6,000 a month, this is why I hate LA because you guys, the money in comparison to what we're getting, I'm sorry, girl, that apartment looked like it should be no more than 15, two grand at the most a month. Like there was no, there was no stupendous view. There was no concierge. There was like none of that, but none of this twist came in with his little homeless man outfit and Savannah, you know, they're sitting there talking. He's like, well, I invited Brianna over. Um, oh, uh, she also told him about, you know, Boogie. He's like, Boogie? She's like, yeah, we're gonna go on a double date. He's like, uh-oh, they're trying to turn this triangle into a, a, to a quad, into a force. So he said, they're trying to suck you in. So Brianna gets there. She's trying to act real classy, babe. She brings her a bottle of wine. Um, she's like, you know, I brought a gift, even though the gift is me. But, you know, I, you know, I don't want to be ratchet. So they end up sitting down. Savannah fills them in on... You know how Egypt and Sam, you know, want to take her out with Boogie. She's like, yeah, Boogie, right, about that. I got my own issues with him. And so we'll see Brianna talk to um, him about it later. So Egypt has a scene with Pep. And this is where I, like, Pep, Pep, you really, you ain't shit, period. Like, you just, and your daughter starting to fall in the footsteps. Like, it just is not cute at all. Um, she's sitting in the bed with that cat who clearly is annoyed with her. 
And Egypt comes in and they just start talking about how, oh, you know, Boogie, you know, we invite her, invited him out. He's taking Savannah, you know, we're going to go eat, da, 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 da. And then they kind of get into how she's like, yeah, I really hope things go well. You know, you just got to go for things in life that you want. She's like, yeah, you know, that's why I just really want to have this happy moment in Jamaica with Sam. I'm just ready to get married, have my happy place. But it's just so annoying that, you know, TT, I hear that, you know, she's going to get married or whatever in Jamaica because she knows I told her that first. And it's like, you're really getting upset because you told her, oh, I'm getting married in Jamaica. Like Egypt, you don't own the whole freaking country of Jamaica. Like, what are you talking about? Y'all could be literally on complete different sides of the planet of Jamaica, like honestly. And so Peppa was like, oh, you know, just don't let nobody stop you. You do what you do. She said, I just feel like this is just life, you know, coming for her because all this stuff is going on with her life. Like, and that's when Pep, you know, started going into how, you know, her sister really came on and did Pep's dirty work. Like it was like when she started in this episode, like, Color Me Pink made such the valid, you know, conception that I came up with as well, which is, you had your sister come on, say what you've been wanting to say, and give you a reason to, like, talk about it without being the bitch who brought it forward, basically. So now, uh, Pep is in the bed making sure she's trying to cover her tracks, like, well, you know, we didn't say nothing, you know, she came to me crying and such, and I guess her, her and Sean working it out now, but, you know, I've been keeping it hushed because, you know, that's what we do, you know, we don't tell nobody business, and it's like, okay, but if that's the case, why are you doing it now? If that's honestly the case, like, oh, you know, we don't do, we don't be messy, it's none of my business, then why are you talking about it now? Like, you definitely were holding that in your back pocket for this exact reason, like, to kind of, like, throw it in her face. And Egypt's like, oh, you know, it's just real crazy. She's coming for me and Sam's relationship, and she's got her own, you know, dirt in her backyard going on. You know, this is just life's karma coming for her. And it's just like, Egypt, I think you have this false sense of, like, importance and a part of that I'm sure has to do with your mom being pep but it's just like you keep feeling like people's lives genuinely revolve around you and Sam and they don't like they don't <laughs> so we see um Savannah getting ready to go on this date with Boogie she calls her brother she's telling about you know who he is and whatnot and he comes up with you know hey like don't you think you want to look him up and she's like oh you think people google us uh absolutely freaking lutely if I'm going on a date with somebody, like, mm, let me kind of get some type of groundwork before I go in. Sometimes. Like, that's just what, like, our generation is doing now. Um, so, I thought she was going to get all the stuff about, you know, his, you know, situations with his dad. You know, the DUI. That's what I thought was going to come up. I was not expecting the domestic violence thing to come up because that was nowhere on the show last season or like came out in like no type of blogs or nothing. So for that to come up specifically, somebody definitely was doing some digging producers and definitely had to give like a little messy tease when it came to the date. So Savannah's like, oh shoot, no, we ain't doing this. Cause and the thing is said, oh, choked her out during sex or something like that. So she was like 50 shades of gray, not me. So Boogie's definitely gonna get these questions and if he ever put his hands on me best believe we both gonna be fighting in this bitch so um she what happens after that oh Vanessa has a little scene so Vanessa y'all doing a little athleisure line because you know she was on her weight loss journey and uh Brianna Cree Angela were all there they start talking about dating, how they, they like their men from the East Coast, good taste, Brianna, love a good, you know, New Yorker, you know, I'm from Queens, you know, born in Queens, so it's like, it's just something different about East Coast people, it just is, um, but, uh, you know, then they start asking Angela about Daniel, like, oh, how'd the fight go, you know, you weren't able to go down there, the fact that she wasn't able to go to the fight, he blamed it on COVID, literally had everybody thinking, Bitch, he sent you home for his wife. Like, she had to be in the box. So, yeah, you had to be MIA. He couldn't allow you to come and mess up his whole plan. Um, and so, Vanessa, honestly, is just kind of like, why is she so vague? Um, you know, because I haven't met him. You say you're in love. He's met the rest of the family. Like, I need to get the tea. So, while she's being so, you know, cryptic about it Vanessa pulls her to the side and goes in the bathroom is like you know what's going on with you and Daniel she's like nothing much like we just chilling she was like okay so when do I get to meet him she's like you have met him she's like in person like 
is it just me or is it always like this just energy like she Angela creates a bad vibe every time she's in a scene specifically with Vanessa I don't know what it is but I feel like there's just a lack of I don't know common respect when it comes to Vanessa like she doesn't care about how she feels a lot of times it seems it doesn't care about like her being super involved in her life because she's like oh you know I'll be moving you know you live on that coast I live on these coasts no cut the bull because you made it possible to go see your uh see Daniel when he was down there when you want to do something you'll do it you don't want Vanessa meeting him because obviously she's a person who might see through it like she might be somebody who looks at him like oh when you got these rose colored glasses on. So she's like, okay, but you know, is there ever gonna be a time that I meet him? She's like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Like, it's, it is what it is. And she's like, oh, really? She's like, you were blushing. She's like, no, I'm not. She was like, you were blushing. Like, there was kind of like always this, ten there's always some type of underlying tenseness between the two. I don't know if that has to do with childhood. I don't know what it is, but I know I'm not tripping. Y'all drop in the comments and let me know. Like, do y'all ever get that, see that vibe that like just contention between the two? when they're having a scene and I really do want to like Angela because at times I do but m most other times like, I'm gonna say like 80% of the time I'm looking at Angela with a side eye because her energy her vibe is just bad um so then Vanessa starts talking about oh you know he was you know I'm starting to think of something going on and like I don't know if she's foreshadowing because apparently you know Angela and him are not together so maybe Vanessa was picking up, up on, on some stuff um so after that we see the date between Egypt Boogie Savannah and um Savannah and Sam Samantha and you know they're cooking and whatnot real cute oh no 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 Boogie ends up getting questioned by Savannah in the car she's like you know he's like oh yeah you cute da -da -da -da, small talk she said yeah cut, cut we gonna cut to it Oh, uh, somebody sent me something about your ex. What was that? He was like, my ex. She was like, y'all weren't together? He was like, no. So she's like, okay, give me the story. So basically, Boogie's story was he was at the club, basically dropping seeds with a whole bunch of different women in the club to take home. He got to the house and multiple women showed up. He wasn't expecting it. Like, it was all women that he had previously been, you know, kind of kicking it with. So I guess he ended up staying with two at the crib. They was in the bed together and ding dong, guess who's at the door? Uh, day day, that crazy bitch I saw it. Like, <laughs> it was one of those moments. So he's like, she busted in. I'm trying to like, ooh, Lord, the sun just came out. Wait a minute, light. I'm over here by my window and the sun just said, boom. Um, yeah, so she comes in, basically he's telling the other girls to get out. And he's basically fighting her like, what are you doing? Get out of my house, da, 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 da. And he, she kicks the other two out and he based, she was like pushing on him. So he's like, I pushed her on the bed and we had sex. And so she's like, huh? And the story is so crazy that I believe it. I would not see Boogie as a dude who's just like choking bitches out. Um, but I do see him like he, he very is like non-confrontational, but people do like that toxic stuff. So the fact that, you know, when a girl be starting to fight, you know, when they say when a girl be acting up, all she wanted is some uh, attention, that be, and that's kind of what happened. Like, they ended up having good old mad at each other situation, and apparently two days later, cops called him, said that, I guess, she uh, accused him of choking her out, and he was like, I had to go to court. Basically, I guess he ended up, like, clean to do, like, the stuff so he didn't go to jail, but then... It's like was weird because they ended up hooking up after that again. So basically the girl's crazy. And so Savannah's hearing the story and she's like, okay, as well as me. Um, yeah, the story's crazy. So like nothing like that, just that, like you don't come up with a story like that. Like that's gotta be something that you did, you know, happened. So they make it to the place. They're doing chicken and whatnot, chicken piccata, whatever it is. And um, they start talking about Egypt and how they're getting married in Jamaica. And Egypt's like, oh my God, TC, you know, even though she's my cousin, she knows this is what I want to do. We're going to go to Jamaica. Like, that's my roots. And Sam does this thing where you can clearly see he is stuck on who I am and respect. Like, that's his thing. Like, 
I'm a somebody because I'm with Egypt. And that's why people don't are not vibing with Sam because he is stuck on the fact that, oh, he's a part of this, like, you know, trilogy of celebrities between Tretch, Egypt, and, you know, Peppa, Salt and Peppa. So he's like, you know what? Oh, Titi, who is she? Like, this is Egypt, you know, the daughter of Tretch and Peppa. Like, she's always bringing negative energy. She doesn't drop any music. She doesn't do this. She doesn't do that. Like, what is she doing with her life? And it's like, that's real ironic coming from the person who is sleeping in their car, homeless, was ripping people off with weave. Like, what? Sam, if you want to ask a question, the question is, who are you? Because wh wh who are you without Egypt? Like, if y'all were not together, you would literally be the same exact thing that you're talking about. Because you ain't dropping any music. You and Egypt haven't been doing anything to further her career necessarily. Like, it was comical the way he was saying it. Um, so we finally get to the end of the episode with uh, Jojo and um, Tania's uh, anniversary party. Everybody shows up. You know, Brianna sees Boogie. He's like, oh, I'm going to get a hug. She was like, oh, we'll talk later. And here comes Twist coming in with these god dang pajamas and pajama slides. He might as well start him a little fluffy shoe line because he has them in almost every god dang scene. Um, so when Cree saw him, she was like, no, this nigga didn't. Like, you come to a white tie anniversary party in pajamas? Okay. Um, the, situ the, the party looks nice, though. Like, I was surprised because I thought it was going to look a little tacky when we saw the parking lot area, just the building in general, but it turned out impeccable. Um, everybody's sitting down and Cree's like, Twist, can you put this blood out for like two minutes? Like, can we let the couple walk in and it not be like a slew of smoke? He's like, you must not know me. You must not met me before. And she's like, yeah, no, but okay. I put a lot of work in this, like for the couple. Can we just keep it cute? And he's like, I'm going to need you to get up off my D. Like, I, no, like, I'm not doing it. So now they're trying to get JoJo and Tania, like, walking in. And so she's like, I need everybody on this side. And she's like, especially you. I don't want the first people they see to be somebody in pajamas. He's like, okay, you stressing me out. Like, you need to get up off of me. Like, I, I don't want to do this. And she's like, look, I'm sorry. I know how to dress. You came in pajamas. Clearly, you want to go be in bed. And she, he, he was like, who are you? He's like, that's why you look like your damn daddy. And everybody said, ooh, not that. Because we all know who our dad is. You know, Mr. Luke, me so horny. That's her dad. And so when you kind of tell a girl, that's why you look like your daddy, it's kind of basically trying to be like, that's why you masculine and ugly. So when everybody was like, ooh, it was kind of like, dang, Twist, like you really taking it there? And she was like, who you want to look like, Lil Wayne? And I mean, it's kind of true. Come on, Twist, like you got to do better than that. Like all you had to do was put the blunt out for two minutes, let them walk in. Then you could have went in the bathroom, went to the parking lot and sparked it back up. But the fact, I think it was just the fact that he was under the influence already, honestly. So Jojo and them come in, sit down, cute, chill. Savannah goes over there by Brianna. Bookie follows and she starts talking about the date. Brianna's like, did you learn about loyalty? He's like, wait a minute, loyalty? Like you trying to take shots at me? And basically that's what happened. She was like, oh, I'm just saying like, we could talk later. Savannah dips, but she's like, wait a minute. If Brianna who knows Bookie is saying he's unloyal, then I need to keep my antennas on this. So she's like, I had a problem with the way that you let Sam in Egypt just like run my name through the, you know, through the mud. You know, it's about my character. Like, you know me, Boogie. Like, why didn't you say nothing? And he was like, I would just let them talk. Like, to me, if I don't say nothing, then basically it stopped. Boogie's not a confrontational person, honestly. I feel bad because I think, like, they just are misunderstanding each other. Like, Boogie didn't want to, like, jump into it, so he just kept it hush-hush. But on the other end, it's like we get Brianna because... If you are my friend and you're in a room full of people who are talking mess about me, like the least you can do is be like, hey, like as long as I'm here, like that's my friend, like, you know, be quiet, at least while I like in my presence, because, you know, that's who I rock with. So Boogie kind of apologized and then everything was good. And then all of a sudden it went left again because he said something to the extent of like, oh, like you mad again? She's like, what? 
And he was like, okay, you're drunk. And so now we're watching Brianna be under the influence in literally almost every scene. So Boogie's feeling like, well, you gave me an intervention. Like, maybe it might be time for you to get one. And so now they're walking away. And Boogie's like, I'm not doing this. And Brianna's like, now. We're doing this now. And so he's like, what do you, like, Brianna, know? Like, we can talk off screen. He's like, I've always, you know, that's why I defend you. She's like, when? When have you done that? I think Boogie defends her. It don't necessarily got to be on the show. I just think he defends her in his own way. But Brianna wasn't hearing it. And I'm sure it had everything to do with those three cups of gin that she had. So now they're yelling at each other. And then that's where the episode ends. So that was this episode of Growing Up Hip Hop. We definitely going to get into the episode of Ready to Love. But you tell me how you feel about Brianna's, uh, you know, principle when it comes to Boogie. Do y'all agree with her? Do you guys feel like Sam is the one that keeps Egypt, you know, hating on TT? Like, does he add fuel to that fire, you know, with the comparison of who she is to TT? Um, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'll catch you guys in the next review. Like, tag, post, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Deuces.